All right, let's talk about array slicing, accessing subarrays uh, using the NumPy library. So I have this Python notebook open here. You can download the same notebook uh, in the link that I have in the description. I have two links. There's the first link, which is just the exercises that look exactly like this. There's no solution inside. And then there's also the second link that has the solutions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my approach to solving some of these problems and solving some of these exercises of um, accessing subarrays. So in, in the beginning, uh, at the very top of this notebook, I had built three arrays, x1, x2, x3. What we're gonna call, call up is x2, uh, uh, sorry, x1. So we're gonna be dealing with x1, which is a one-dimensional array with nine elements spanning the values of zero to nine. And that's what, is, what we see right here. So what we want, the first question, uh, we want what we want to do is create a slice, and a slice just means a subarray containing the last five elements of x1. So how do we grab the last five elements of x1? So I know what I want here, right? I want these last five numbers. So there's several ways of doing this. The easiest way of doing that is, one, to use a negative index. So I'm going to just call up x1 and uh, brackets. And what I'm going to do is type in negative 5 because what I want as the starting point is the, the, the uh, fifth to last value, which is going to be this first zero that you see up here. And then colon, and I want it to go all the way to the very uh, very end of the array. So that actually, then I don't have to type in anything. There's an in, implicit default that if I don't type anything, any value next, it's gonna go to the, to the very end of the array. And it's also gonna step by one. So if I actually just do this and execute it, I get the last five elements of X1, right? But as a beginner, this is a little bit difficult to read and understand. Like how, how were we able to get the last five uh, elements of the array? So there's another way of just being more explicit with this. So, you know, another way of writing would be, you know, negative five. So the, the, the last, the, the fifth element from the last as a starting point. And then uh, colon, and then the last element, what is that position? What's that position of six, right? So we start with the first position in Python, which is negative, which is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So um, because I want eight to be displayed, I'm actually gonna type in nine because we remember the stopping the stopping value is always exclusive. So if we put the position nine, which is not even here, it's gonna give us all the way up to position eight, which is the six. And it's gonna include six, which is what we want. And then we're gonna step by one. And then we get the exact same output, right? We get zero, zero, one, seven, six, right? So this, this top, this line of code here is exactly this line of code here. There's many, many other ways to actually do this. Like you could actually do x1, you know, negative five colon colon to implicitly state that you want the, the array to go to the very end step by one. And what you're gonna get is the same thing, 00176. So there are multiple ways of skinning the cat and um, any one of these three is valid. And there's probably even multiple more ways of solving this uh, question. So let's go to create a slice containing every third element starting at the second element of X1. So starting at the second element, which is eight, and then containing every third element, which would be like a, I'm guessing, a zero every third element and then it's going to give me seven after that so i'm expecting starting at the second element i'm expecting a zero then i'm expecting a seven 
right? So let's just see if we can just reverse engineer this and, and build it uh, to get the answer we want. So we're gonna start with x1 as the array. So what is the second element? So that's an eight. What position is that second element in? That second element is in the first position, the first index or index of one, right? Because it always starts with the zero index. So the second element will always be in the, the index of one. And then we want to go, we, we're going to have a colon and we want it to go to the very end of the array. So there's an implicit default that if I just type in colon again, it's going to go to the very end. And then I want every third element. So I want it to step by three. So I'm just going to type in the three here. And I get it. I get eight, zero, and seven. So that's one way of doing it. And again, there are probably multiple ways of typing this to get 807. And so if you get it in another way, that's perfectly fine. Create a slice where x1 is reversed. So this one is actually pretty easy. We just want to step by negative one, right? So if we call up uh, x1, we're just going to do colon colon because there's an implicit default that you're going to start at the very first element, you're going to go to the very last element, and then you're just going to step by negative one. And what I get is essentially the reverse of this array. So it should be six, seven, one, zero, zero, all the way till five. And that's exactly what I expect. Right? So now, so now let's deal with multi-dimensional subarrays and do some of the exercises here. So I have an X2 array, which is a three by three array right there. And we have a few exercises to learn how to slice and retrieve multiple values of this array. So the first question, the first exercise is to create a slice containing the first two rows. So the first two rows is this and the first column, which is just the column that starts with the nine. So I expect in my output to have a nine and a five and nothing else. And so basically the question is, how do we index this array so that it only outputs a nine and a five? So let's just call this array first. And we're gonna have brackets. How do we call only the first two rows, right? Because we know the first value, first parameter is going to be the row index, and then the second parameter is going to be the column index. So we know the first thing to do is actually call the, the, row, the row index. So how do we call in the first two rows? So what we could do is do a zero, because it's gonna start at the zero position, which is this nine, nine position, or this row with, that starts with the nine. And then we're gonna go all the way to this second position here, a second index, which is really the third row, right? But we're gonna put a two. Because the way Python works is the first index is zero, and then the second is one, and then the third is two. But if I have a two here, it's not gonna display this last index that I've asked it to display. It excludes it. So it really is only gonna display five, two, four. So this is perfect. We're gonna call the second second index here. So, and we know it's gonna exclude it. And it's only gonna give us nine and five, the rows that start with nine and the row that starts with five. And then I'm gonna step by one. And now I need to grab the first column of X2. And how do we do that? Well, we can start at zero again the first column, we can stop it at, at basically right here, the, the index of one. So we just wanna just grab this column, right? And to do that, we're just gonna type in a one because it's gonna start at the first index and it's gonna stop at the, at the second index. So in, in, in Python, it's gonna start at the zero index, it's gonna stop at the first index. And then we're gonna step by one. And so if we get if we run this line of code, we should get nine five. That's exactly what we get. Another way of writing this, like a, a shorthand way of writing this, is actually a colon two, colon one. 
And the reason why this is going to work, I'm going to execute it right now and get the same values. The reason why this works is just because of how the default values work. If I don't explicitly write a zero here, it's going to assume that I want to start at the beginning of the array. That's exactly what I want to do. And then I just explicitly call out the stop value. And then if I don't write anything here to the right of two, it's going to assume that I want to step by one. And that's exactly what I want to do. And the same concept goes for this, uh, this column parameter here. All right, so there's multiple ways of writing, uh, uh, writing the solution to this exercise. So the next question is, create a slice where the rows have been reversed um, for x2. So let's see what x2 looks like. I want the rows reversed. So ex essentially I want, let's see, I want the rows reversed. So I want this 25 to be on top this five will stay and then this nine will be at the bottom, right? And then this is basically, it should be 25, four and seven at the top and then at the bottom nine, two and four. So let's see if we can do that. So X two with the brackets and how are we gonna write this? So if we want just the rows reversed, um, we're gonna access all of the rows, which means that we're, we're just gonna do colon colon because it's going to imply that we want to start at the beginning stop at the end of the array and then we're just gonna step through it by using negative one and that's how you reverse it you step through it in reverse and that's corresponding to the row parameter with the column parameter we're just going to keep everything the same so we're not going to actually write anything in the column parameter so we do this we get the rows reversed we get 25 four and seven at the top and the original X2 array had it at the bottom. And then this column nine, two, four, we have it at the bottom and at the original X2 array, we have it at the top. And so that's how, how you reverse the rows. So second uh, or third question, print the first column of X2. How do we do that? So if we print the first column of X2, we just want to print out nine, five, 25, right? So how do we actually do that? That's actually pretty easy. If you've been following along, uh, we want basically everything in the, the row parameter. So what we can do is just do a colon colon. And then uh, we want the first column, which is the, the index of zero, right? The first position, which, is, which corresponds to the zero index. So we're just gonna type in the zero and that's what we get. 9525. What if we actually just did this? Do we get the same thing? Invalid syntax. So you actually have to, for the first parameter, you actually have to type in um, the colon colon. So the row parameter has to be explicit, whereas this column parameter doesn't necessarily need to do that. You don't need to really do that. All right, and so here, print the first row of X2. The first row is 924, and how do we do that? Well, X2, the first row is really the index of zero, and then I want everything, right? So I'm just gonna type in colon colon because it's gonna implicitly tell me, start at the first column, end at the last column, step by one. And I get a 924. So that's pretty easy also.